Hello, my name's Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install 2F Auth on a Portainer. So, 2F Auth is to where you can keep track of all your authentication co codes in one app, and it's private and secure on your network. So, a little bit about this series, I'm going over home labs, installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel, and let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on discourse. So go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So let's get back to your registered programming. So a little bit about two-factor auth. It's a web app to manage your two-factor authentication accounts and generate security codes. Uh, they, they have great documentation right here so you can get started and security API and support. Here's what it looks like. It's pretty nice. And a, a generate passwords, a work anywhere, Q QR code scan. Two-factor auth management, protect your data, multi-user, import and export, and a REST API, and here's a demo. So, that's what we'll be installing today. So I'm going to start on Big Bear Video Assets. There will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. And I'm going to go to how to install 2F auth on Portainer right here. And then I'm going to go into Docker and Pose. So, version 3.8, Docker and Pose is being used. I'm going to set some services, and this service underneath the service is called App. The container name is going to be called Big Bear 2F Auth. And then the image is coming off Docker Hub because there's no URL before this. And the Docker image tag is 423. The restart policy is unlap stopped. So if this stops for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails or any other reason, then it will try to restart. And then the port map is 8000 to 8000. So host and then the container. If the host does collide with another port on your host, then you can change this port to another port like 8001. And then now network mode is set to bridge. The vo volumes are using a local uh, vo volume uh, down here. And then on the container is 2F off. So you can change the host side, but you cannot change the container side. And it's using a, lo a local driver uh, a, a volume down here. So now I'm going to copy raw file and then I'm going to go over my portainer and get this installed. So I'm going to start on my portainer. I'm going to go to local and then stacks and then add stack up here. And all a stack is is Docker Compose in the background. So I'm going to name my stack 2F auth stack and um, I'm going to come down here to the web editor. So one thing about this is uh, this is going to error out because the 8000 on the host is being used. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy it and show you it. So you can see over here, it gives you a nice descriptive error and it says bind for 8000 on the host failed port is already allocated. So I would figure I'd just give you a, te a teachable moment of that you can go to here. You can change the host port to 8001. And then you can deploy the stack again, and it's deployed. So, you can uh, change the host ports on some containers. So, I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it, and it greatly supports this channel, and I very much appreciate it. So, uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down in the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So, let's get back to registered programming. So on the stacks, if you go in the stack, you, uh, you can have the stack to where you can stack duplication and migration. You can go in editor and change the Docker compose. And you can come down here and update the stack. You can repull the image and redeploy. And this means that it'll repull the Docker image off of the registry, uh, update the local cache, and then redeploy it. And you can toggle this on and off and then press update. So, um, you can also go back to stack. You can stop the stack. You can delete the stack. You can create a template from the stack. You can see the containers running right here and access control. So you can see some container information too. So that's a little bit about the stack options. So now we will go over the container options. 
So we're going to be in our stack and then we're going to go to container down here. So, so you see some container status like runtime, created, start time, the name, the IP address of the Docker container, and the ID. You can see actions up here. So start, stop, kill, restart, pause, resume, remove, recreate, and duplicate and edit. And then um, you can see logs right here. It's great for debugging. And inspect, stats, console, attach, access, control, and then create image. And then the container details like the image, the port configuration, 8001's on the host. And you know that because the zeros and the 8000 is on the container. So left and right. So, and then there's no command, in in entry point, and then the environment variables and the la uh, labels right here and the restart policy. So none, on failure, always, unless stopped. So you can change that by updating it right here. Um, the volumes that are set, so local drive, and then on the host, and then path in the container. And then it did create a bridge network down here. So that's a little bit about the container options. So now I'm gonna go over the UI. So um, I'm gonna go to the IP address of the portainer, and then 8001, because we changed it from 8000 to 8001 on the host. So I'm going to re return or enter. Now um, you can sign in. I'm gonna register real quick. And okay, now you put your name in, your email address, and your password, and register. And you can register a device, so I'm gonna maybe later. So you can scan a QR code, you can upload a QR code, you can use the advanced form, and you can import. You can also go down to settings right here. You can change the language. You can change the display mode from grid to list. You can change the theme, light, dark, and auto. So you can show icons, get official icons, password formatting, pair, trio, half. The default group, or remember group uh, filter, the auto lock, and uh, sh show password. Show generated one-time passwords as dots. And then copy and display. And then the data input, use basic QR code reader, direct input, and default input mode, administration where you can check for updates and protect sensible data and disable re registration. You can go up to this tabs right here and you can get more options. So change password, delete account, OAuth, generate a token, a web auth in, you can register a new device. So that's a little bit about 2F auth. So I just went over everything to get up and running with 2F auth on Portainer. So I showed you how to change the host port if it conflicts, everything like that. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or you need community support, you can go down to the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.